Hi everyone, mm, welcome to this tutorial. Uh, my name is Abhishek and I'm an engineer at Facebook Air Research working on the Habitat project. So in this tutorial, I'll be talking about the Habitat lab component of the Habitat shift. Good, uh, okay, let's get started. Okay, so you must be seeing my screen now. So this is a collab not, a notebook that I've set up for Habitat Lab. Uh, the initial cell set up the installation for Habitat Lab. So I've gone ahead and already run these cells. So going forward from here, so I'm starting from a notebook from scratch so that you will be able to follow along the code as I go along. So just uh, running some basic imports and defining some observation visualization utility function. If you really want to look at these functions, you can double click on these also. So that's a nice feature. Uh, and uh, so uh, let me first start out by giving you a brief idea of what is Habitat Lab. In another tutorial, you must have seen Habitat Sim. So say Habitat Sim is a simulator for rendering egocentric views inside indoor houses. So uh, that is more that layer of the stack focuses more on the graphics side of things uh, and is responsible for simulating the agent producing the observations that are seen by the agent now on top of this layer what habitat lab does is it gives you an epi to define new tasks and to define new agents and train these agents using uh, reinforcement learning, uh, slam based methods, and uh, so yeah, all that functionality is handled by Habitat Lab. And in this tutorial, I'll briefly go over what a what is a task, what are the core components of Habitat Lab, and how can you add a new task, a agent, new sensor, and how do you train these agents? So I've already given you an overview of the Collab Notebook. So let's set up a point nav task inside Habitat Lab. So what is point nav? Point nav is a navigation task in which an agent is initialized at the start position and it is asked to go to a target position. And it has to, uh, yeah, so it has to move around in the house, avoid obstacles and figure out a way to the target location. So yeah. Uh, uh, in Habitat Lab, uh, most of the configurations so are controlled by these config uh, YAML files. So, for example, here I am showing you a simple test config file. In so, how wh what are the things that you define inside config in this config file? You define the environment, you define the simulator, what kind of sensor you want, what are the resolutions of those sensor, then what data set to use. So, data set here is a collection of all the episodes that are defined for the point of task and then you have some task level parameters like uh, success distance which defines how close the agent has to get to the target location and to reach it successfully what kind of metrics you want to try so uh, so what we do in habitat lab is you get this config and then you create this environment so environment is a wrapper over, over all the complexity which handles the agent, the task, what are the metrics, etc. So here I've created this environment and then I'm going to give you a walkthrough of how to perform this task. So here I'm running, a, so I've defined what are the valid actions and I'm uh, running the environment which here I show the observation from the simulator so the distance to goal is 5.64 and the angle to goal is 2.88 that's in radians so you can enter one of these four actions turn left turn right move forward or stop so let's enter turn left and we can also move forward so here you'll see that if you compare these two observations, the agent has actually moved forward inside the house. And uh, eventually what a successful episode looks like is you have to navigate to the target location and call a stop action when you are within 0.2 meters of the goal location. So here, just for just to keep it short, I'll call the stop action here. So as you'll know, uh, I called the stop action when the distance to goal was 5.87 meters. So this episode should be a failure 
and if you print the environment metrics here you see that the success spl sort spl metrics were failure number zero so okay this is all good this hopefully this gives you an intuition of what a task feels like inside habitat a lab now now actually let's train an rl agent so the functionality for training an rl agent is already built in so what you do is you get a you get the config file corresponding to the rl agent and in and for example here i have given some config modifications where you can set the seed for the agent for example let's set it to 42 and the number of updates you want to run it for let's say i want to run it for 20 updates here you will leave this as uh, usually a large number in hundreds and thousands of uh, hundreds or hundred thousand or around million so but just for briefness i'm taking it as small number so i set these parameters i set up my config i set the random seeds and the random seeds for the environment are handled by habitat lab because we specify the seed here so the habitat lab will pick up the seed and will set it accordingly for the simulator and here i get the base trainer and i initialize this trainer and start training so uh yeah so if you look at the log files that are coming out so yeah you look at these updates and what is the average reward how was the split between different time frame, between what was the split of time between the simulator and the neural network so uh, i'm again just showing this for demo purpose we don't expect the model to learn something useful in this short period of time also we do have functionality to support and support so here I'm just showing a GIF of if you run the TensorFlow functionality, what would that look like? Okay, so hopefully, uh, so my tutorial until now must have given you an idea of what are the different components. Uh, now let's go over some key concepts. Habitat sim. So this class is a thin wrapper over the habitat simulator that you must have seen in the other tutorial. So this class provides some functionality so that everything integrates well with the framework and data set, task, environment, etc. And the habitat environment class, it wraps everything together that we have, the task, the data set, the simulator and then it gives an interaction point for the agent to work with so the agent is going to call a step action inside the environment the environment is going to perform a step and then it will return it the observations and then at the same time it's also going to track the different metrics for the particular task rl environment just abstracts it and puts everything nicely for a reinforcement learning environment so if you have a rl baseline that is implemented you can just implement the functionality for this environment and then it works really well with our environment so then you have a embodied task so in this so this class gives the framework for defining what task you're trying to solve what metrics you're tracking what's a success what a fail, what, what what is a failure case data set is a wrapper over the uh, instances of the task that you are performing then measure is a metric for tracking the performance of your agents on a particular task and then habitat baseline is a collection of rl slam and heuristic based baselines for solving the tasks that are defined inside habitat so now so earlier i had shown you how to set up a point knife task now let's say you want to create your own task so for the sake of this example, I want to create a task in which not only does the episode end when the agent calls a stop action, but the an episode also ends if the agent collides with a particular object. So how would I go by go about implementing that? I will inherit from this navigation based navigation navigation task based class, and I'll also I have to give a name for the registry so that when you want to create this task you can specify this name and that is the identifier for this task and in the check episode is active i'm going to check whether the agent had a collision in the previous step and 
if there was a collision in the previous step or the agent called a stop action, then I will say the uh, episode is, uh, and based on that, I'm going to decide whether the episode is active or not. Okay, so this is how you create a new task. Now, moving on, uh, let's say you, so this I have given an example of what happens when you go about solving this task. And what you see is that once you collide, you will actually end up uh, uh, the episode ends. So now what if you want to create a new sensor? What you can, for example, in addition to the RGB depth and distance to goal sensor, let's say I want to create an agent position sensor, which tells me the location of the agent solving this task. So for that, I have, I'll inherit from this habitat sensor. What I'll do, I'll define a UI, uh, universal ID for this sensor, which is agent position. And then for getting the observation, I'm going to call the get agent state and return its position. So once you have this sensor defined, what you can do is you add the sensor to our config that we're using. So we say config dot task sensors append agent position sensor and we define its type and also set up a base config for it. And then we create this environment with this config. And now, now you will see when you call the environment reset on top of this or when you step inside the environment that there is this point goal, uh, this agent position sensor and if you print out this agent position sensor then you will get the x y z of the agent okay so now i have shown you how to create a task create a new sensor and now let's go through how do you create an agent that I, that is actually submitted to habitat challenge so habitat challenge uh, so for example in one of the tracks in habitat challenge we have a point nav task and in that if you have to submit an agent you have to implement it according to the instructions that we provide in this read in the reading of this repository. But just to briefly go through them, you inherit the habitat agent class. You define an act method and a reset method. So here, because I am defining a really simple agent which just goes forward, and if it reaches goal, it has it calls a stop action. So there's not much functionality here. So I just define this act method. I check if the goal has been reached. So for checking if the goal is reached, I just check what's the distance and whether the distance is less than the distance to threshold that I want, uh, that the task requires. So if the distance to goal is smaller than the threshold, you call the stop action. Otherwise, you just call the move forward action and you just create this agent and you can submit this directly to Habitat Challenge. And what Habitat Challenge will do is it will take this agent. We have our uh, test split and it will run this agent through episodes in the test split and then it is going to return you uh, like measures whether your how, what was the percentage of your success and what was the SPL for this agent. So, uh, another example that you can also look at is this creating a new action space. For example, if you define, if you want to define noisy actions or strafing actions, like uh, if you want to move left and right, uh, if you want to strafe left and right, then how would you go about doing that? Okay, so now uh, let's look at a simple example. So. Uh, until now, all the training and testing that has been happening in simulation, but we want these robots to be actually deployed in reality. Uh, so what we have here is a sim to real example using Habitat in which we train the robot inside simulation and deploy it in a real world. And we see that the simulation actually is uh, is good at predicting how the agent or the model is going to perform in reality. So if you want to take a look at this, you can go look at this paper that I've added to the notebook. Or, and switching between simulation and reality is as simple as switching, modifying this config parameter. And cool, that's it. I hope you guys learned something new with this tutorial. 
uh, if you want to de dive deeper or go through this notebook, this is all going to be uploaded to the tutorial page. And and if you have any issues, open it up on the GitHub repository. And thanks a lot.